You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Hi, if you're struggling with your relationship or you just can't seem to find the right one, author Gerald Manuel has written an enlightening new book entitled How to Identify Your Spiritual Soulmate. You may order a copy today from Amazon.com or at BarnesandNoble.com. This book is sure to answer many of the questions you may have. Thank you and God bless you. I'm Daryl Freeman, Jr., author of Betraying My Father, Remember My Name, Reality is Always There, and A Dreadful Day. And you listen to Jerry Royce Live. You are listening to PositivePower21.org with Jerry Royce. What up, it's your boy Kano Kingston. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. Hey, this is Kat. Hi, I'm Teresa Powell. Hi, Jerry. This is Iowa Sandro Carter. Hi, this is Paul Powers. Hello, this is Teresa Bobby with Jerry Royce Live. Hi, I'm Philip Byrne. I'm live on the Jerry Royce Show. Hi, what do you do? This is your boy who is the same. Peace, this is Dolly, the poet, spoken word artist. Hello, this is Ramon Marquis with Jerry Worth Live. All right, all right, everyone. we got Robin in, and I'm keeping it live right now on Jerry Royce Live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's up? This is a war winning podcast with the greatest podcast on earth. Thank you for stopping by. I'm your host, Jerry Royce Live Worldwide on Internet Radio where you get your positive on. So when it's all positive, it's all power. That's positive power. This is a worldwide podcast for growth, wealth, and success. Thank you. Think you know how drugs get in those little brown bottles? Think again. Set in the green hills of western New Jersey inside the gilded halls of power of a U.S. pharmaceutical company where decisions are worth billions of dollars and human lives worth less. Nicholas Harding, a young executive at Marshall Pharmaceutical, finds his career, family, and life in jeopardy. The Farmhouse, a suspense thriller novel by Bill Powers, published by Donna Inc. Publications, available at Amazon.com or DonnaInc.org. Go to Bill's webpage at www.authorbillpowers.com. Are you looking for the next great read? A book filled with love, passion, betrayal, and intrigue. The award-winning novel, Season of Change, by Tamika Patrice Kane is sure to satisfy your literary sweet tooth. Check out this must-read book reviewers are calling uplifting and emotional and exceptionally great read, deeply intense and thought-provoking. Order your copy today, available in paperback, and ebook on Amazon.com or at www.TamikaPatrice.com. Are you an author looking for promotional services or a reader looking for a great read at low prices? In this competitive world of books, Fighting Royalty Promotions is dedicated to bringing authors and readers together to build a greater respect for literature through our various promotional services and online bookstores. So head over to writingroyaltypromotions.com and check us out. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining us, and welcome to PositivePower21.org. I am Jerry Royce Live, and you're listening to episode 337. That's right, 337. And my special guest tonight is Darrell Freeman. That's right, and tonight he's here to talk about his book, Betraying My Father, and he's here to talk about his stage play that's coming soon. So uh, hold back, relax yourself. And let's hear a message from our sponsor, Reese World Publishing. Hold tight, everybody. Are you an avid reader of urban fiction looking for drama, suspense, and more? Reese World Publishing is dedicated to bringing the world's best literature to our readers. 
Urban fiction, erotica, sci-fi, mainstream fiction, and children's literature are just some of the genres produced by our diversified family of authors. You can reach us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at our website, www.reeswellpublishing.com. All right, everybody, we're back, we're back. All right, we're going to read uh, Mr. Freeman's his bio. He was from Crowley, Louisiana, 33 years old. He attended Crowley High School in North Texas Job Corps. Throughout his life, he's encountered mishaps and struggling struggles and trials, but he has never given up. Convinced he could do better, he began to follow his dreams of being an author. Since then, he's released four books, Reality is Always There, A Dreadful Day, Remember My Name, Betraying My Father. He's been featured in nine books such as From a Window, Quilla, Tranquility, Why We Wrote, Volume 2, Poetic Gumbo, Hurricane Katrina, Couldn't Break Us, Savor the Longest Night, or Savor, is that Savor the Longest Night? Savor the Longest Day Special. Hmm? You said it's called Savor? Yes, yeah, Savor the Longest Night. All right. And then you have Always oh, That Why I'm Single, Coming Soon, No Faces, Coming Soon, and Doughboys Coming Soon. His advice to anyone is never give up. Be your biggest critic and convince yourself you can. Look out for his upcoming website, freemansworld.org, coming soon. All right. All right, Mr. Freeman. Welcome to Jerry Woods Live Worldwide. How you doing tonight? I'm doing great. I'm doing wonderful, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. And you and you did say Daryl, right? You said your first yeah. name Daryl. All right. Okay, because like I was telling you, it reminds me of how my one of my friends spelled his name, and he has his was spelled uh, with Y. Uh, oh, and I hate it when they spell it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people got Y and Daryl. All right, but you got two L's. All right, that's good, man. All right, well the first question is, who is Daryl R. Freeman Jr.? Well, I mean, I'm just a down to earth type of person. Uh, I'm a father. Uh, I'm a true believer in God, domestic violence advocate, and, you know, just uh, just someone looking to do better for himself and help strengthen our community. You know, that's right. basically it in a nutshell. All right. Sounds good. All right. Now, we know, you know, you've been living 33 years. There's a lot more to you than that. <laughs> but it's no problem, man. Everybody, everybody's so humble these days. But I've had some people that went almost 20 minutes, man, on their bio. Oh. So anyway, so anyway, bro. So tell us a little bit about yourself, man. You know, you know, I know you, we know you're an advocate, you know, for domestic violence. We're gonna find out why. But uh, tell us what, what type of student were you in high school? You know, what, t- what type of kid were you? Um, I was basically a, a, I was like an average C student. You know, I mean, I was easily, um, easily distracted. You know, I mean, um, I really didn't take things seriously. You know, but I mean, I oh. did. You know. You know what I mean? I didn't take things too seriously, but I mean, I was I wasn't a class clown either, you know. Yeah, so you were just chilling, just 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 doing what you got to do, watching what the other kids doing. <laughs> right, right. You, you know, when you, when you're young, you know, you just think you got the whole world ahead of you, you know, and you sometimes you just don't take life seriously, you know, and and that's the type of person I was. Yeah. Now, did, now did you play sports in high school? Uh, I played sports in middle school, but uh, high school, no, I, I didn't play any sports in high school. Okay, so what, what was the deal? You was more, you started getting a little more involved with, you know, with the girls, or you just, you know, you didn't want to get hit hard, you know, no football, <laughs> baseball. <laughs> what was the deal? Well, uh, well, uh, once I got to high school, you know, what I mean, I, I start seeing, you know, it's just a, it was just a lot of work for me to be able to have to get up and go to practice and do do all this and do all that, you know. I just decided to fall back because um uh you know, I I didn't really want to do it, you know. So I just decided to fall back and just just relax a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You got to be committed to sports now, man, cuz I, I you know, I, I rem- this past uh summer starting in August, my youngest son started playing tackle for the first time and man but that's like boot camp man boot camp and i th- I think they probably actually work harder than the pros because i don't think the 
the coach is trying to hurt those guys before, you know, wear them down before the season start. Just get enough out of them to keep, keep them legs fresh. But them young boys, man, boy, they be running them kids, man. They be running oh, them, yeah. man. Man, yeah, I, like I was playing. Get back at him. I, I was playing ball in the park with my uh, with my son and some other people, and we, we was playing football. And man, some young kids wore me out. <laughs> so how, yeah. how old are your children? Well, well, my son is. Uh, he just turned twelve a couple of days ago. Oh, awesome! Same age as my kid. Yeah, I got a son twelve. All right. So you just have just one, the one child. Yes, sir. All right. That's right. It costs too much money, man. All right. Yeah. Now, what type yeah. of what type of kid is he, man? Is he uh, is he is he athletic? He likes you know video games, sports, or you know he's into well, his books. And he's into a little bit of everything. I mean, he 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 likes sports. He uh he, he wants to play football, and uh you know whenever school starts next year, he wants to play football. But I mean, he likes to play games, and you know uh, I think every kid at his age is a whiz with computers and phones and everything. You know, so he yeah, knows how to yeah. work my phone and my computer better than me. That's right. Yeah, they know that stuff, man. Now, now you're you're a pretty young father. You know, thirty three, son twelve. You guys gonna probably be pretty tight growing up you know my son was like that too and um you know you guys pretty close knit you know you take him out to, to events you know you guys always together on the weekends you know doing guy stuff what's the deal right right i mean i mean well that's like my best well that's like my best kid friend you know i mean like you know we we do everything together i try i try to show him you know um how you know how to how to be a man and stuff like that, and you just try to have fun with him and teach him things. And since I write books, he tries to write books too. You know, he always he always reads the books with me and stuff like that. So I'm just glad I can be like a little positive influence in his life and just you know just be a role model for him. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Same here, man. You know, one of one of my 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 mission was to try to start a a home based business where you know. I could be home, you know, earn a decent income and not out the house. You know, you you went to, even though, you know, I'm not up there right there watching TV, you know, I'm not going to sit around and watch those shows he want to watch anyway. But, you know, they know I'm home, I'm in the house, uh, I fix dinner for them when I get in, I greet them, I ask them how school was, do they need any help, you know, any projects. You know, cause a lot of times they be telling, springing stuff on me at the last minute. While I'm broadcasting, right. you know, so it's like, hey, y'all. And they they help me out with a lot of the studio stuff, you know, any administrative work I need done. And they want to learn the business, some other areas we're trying to move into when it comes to recruiting talent and, you know, producing shows. So they, um, you know, they involve him and my daughter. My daughter's 15. So it's exciting, man, when you can have kids like that you can be involved in. Now, like your son, his friends, you know, what kind of friends um does he have? Are you involved with the parents? Do you understand, you know, their makeup? Uh, well, well, his friends, he, he's kind of like me. I mean, we have like a very limited circle around us, you know what I mean? Because, I, I mean, I'm a real sociable, sociable type of person, you know, but, um, you know, it's certain, certain people I hang around with. Like, like my, my close friends are actually like my brothers and maybe like my cousins, few people I went to school mm-hmm. with, maybe one or two coworkers. And, you know, his, his friends are usually... Usually the neighbors, somebody he goes to school with, and maybe somebody that rides his bus, you know. They they yeah, real close. Yeah, right. Yeah, sometimes you should be able to just count them on one hand. You know, the rest of them are just associates, you know. It's like, you know, especially the homeboys. You know, after a while, you know, the homeboys kind of go their separate ways. You know, everybody living a different type of lifestyle, unless you're in business together or something like that. Because I used to be in, in business with my friends, you know, years ago. But then as everybody got older, you know, you tend to go your separate ways. But eventually we probably all come together because I got a very, very good friend giving a big event. And I want to let everybody know in Baltimore there's a, a jazz event going on um, at the, at a cigar lounge on Pulaski Highway. I can never remember the name of that joint. But it's going to be a jazz show there. If you want more information, you can inbox me on Facebook. It's going to be at 7 o'clock. It's in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, they're going to be having live jazz, and you get a chance to sit back and, and smoke your cigars. You know, have yourself a good time and um, enjoy some entertainment and some drinks and all that stuff. And then come meet me. All right? So that's going to be in Baltimore. Again, if you need the information, just inbox me, and I'll send you the address. Tickets are $25. So I thought I'd throw that in there real quick because I forgot about it. I needed to make a commercial on that. So anyway, 
That is awesome, man. You know, we got to do our thing, man. You know, keep in contact with your close friends, but, you know, you can't have too many of them, you know. You right, know, right. Like that. All right. All right, so that's good. So you're far. Now, uh, are you are you still good friends with the with the child's mom? You know. Uh, well, well actually, yeah. Well, actually, we're still together. You know, we're still together. You know, what I mean, I you know I come home to my family every night. You know, what I mean. Uh, oh, get out of here. Okay. You know? So I mean, are you are you guys married or y'all, y'all just you know just still courting? I mean, not courting, but go together. <laughs> Well, well, you know how that goes these days, but I mean, we uh, we we are working towards that, you know. We we are working towards that, but you know, um, I'm basically I'm not the type of person that's just gonna um, marry somebody because they're pregnant or you know because you know we've been together for a while. I mean, I want to make sure this is. I mean, I, I want to make sure this is what we both want, and that you know we. We're moving forward together, you know. We're not trying to drift mm-hmm. apart. We're moving forward together. So, all right. So, so you are you guys living together? Right, right. Living together. Okay. All right. Well, you you got to check out this book that's on my website. I, mean, I had I had Mr. I had Pastor Gerald Mann. You got this book on that call. And I mean, I'm only introducing you to this book because you you know you said it. You know you want to make sure. He has a book out called How to Identify Your Spiritual Soulmate. All right. Yes, it's a right. sale. Yeah. Um, 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 uh, good book, man. You you gotta check it out. I mean, here's some chapters on there. Say the first marriage hookup. Why is it important to have the right mate? Why is it taking so long? How do I know if this is the one? Is it okay. wrong for a woman to pursue a man? All that good stuff, man. So you gotta oh, check it out, you. man. I'm, I, I you sure know. will. You're gonna have to. Uh, you're gonna have to give me that information again because um, I'm actually. Um, I'm actually writing a, a stage play called uh, No, I Won't Marry You, and I'm just, you know, we're just discussing different issues about how come couples and individuals don't get married. So, I mean, that could be like a good, um, uh, you, you know, that, that book will really yeah, help with, uh, yeah, with, 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 my, uh, with my play. Yeah, make a good reference book. Yeah, the book's called How to Identify Your Spiritual Soulmate. It's right there on PositivePower21.org for anybody. Yeah, I'm plugging stuff right now. I can't believe it already. And we still got three more minutes before we do our plugs. But anyway, I'm plugging that book because it's a good book, it's a spiritual book. And because you're in that situation right now, it might it might help you, you know, to understand, you know, what you're getting into. But, you know, like like you get a chance to listen to that podcast, um, Pastor Gerald, he gets into a, a lot of that the fact that he's not telling people not to get married, but you know you just need to know what you're getting into spiritually. You know, and he, and he yeah, covers some right. really good topics in, in the conversation too that that you definitely probably want to hear. Anybody out there single, same situation. You know, Mr. Freeman's in. You may want to check out that podcast, and that's the podcast right before this one, three three six. All right, three thirty six. All right, guys, you listen to episode three thirty seven. We're talking to Daryl R. Freeman Jr. When we get back, we're going to talk about his betraying my father, his book, and also he's going to tell a little bit about the stage play, why he wrote it, and and, and it should be it's supposed to be coming out sometime this fall. Is, is that right, Daryl? This fall? Yes, sir. It comes out in November. All right. So have you already chose the cast? Can anybody try out or audition? Well, we. we we already have our cast together, but we are uh, looking for um, extras and uh, and like step ins, you know, just in case someone someone can't do it. You know, we we're looking for replacements. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that they go down like that. After I was I was looking at um, um Kim Kim Whitley, her show. Uh, what's her little son name? Jeremiah or something like that. She has a show oh, okay. where she was yeah, producing the yeah. play. Little Jeremiah, and, yeah. And the little the guy, one of the guys got pretty upset because she had a a standby. I mean, he was standing by too. And I was like, "Well, I didn't know they do that." But then I've heard, you know, sometimes we have stage plays. The lead actor may, or the actors who have the main parts may not be able to continue the tour. Or right, you know, right. You know, it, in case the ticket don't stop the show. Right, you just never know what happens, and you know you you need someone that's gonna be able to fill in. You know, I mean, you can't can't just uh, cancel the show because somebody can't you know can't yeah. travel with. Now, so 
So what is that like, man, when, you know, you cast a, a group like that? And you, you, I mean, are you doubling up on all the actors or you have maybe one or two that can do multiple roles? How does that work? Oh, well, I mean, we're, we're actually looking for people that can do multiple roles, you know, just in case one can't do this one or, we, or if someone can't make it to the next show, we can switch uh we can switch characters around and things like that. But, I mean, you want to look for uh, people who have experience and things like that, you know. If if mm-hmm. push comes to shove, you know, I'll get in the play, you know, the, whatever it takes to keep it up and running. That's right. That's right. All right. All right, well, we're ready to take our break. Let me cue it up real quick. I actually picked out the... The commercials I was going to run tonight, too. I'll tell you all. Here we go. All right, everybody. We got a, a book buzz presentation from Helen McMillian, McMillan and, and Cynthia and Lane Cobb. All right, check it out. What's stopping you from making more, having more, and being more? Hi, I'm Helen McMillan. I'm a success coach. I can help you shift into your million-dollar zone of joyful success. Be your most magnetic, confident, and powerful self. The first step is to get my free ebook, Seven Simple Ways to Shift into Your Million Dollar Zone. Go to www.yourmilliondollarzone.com and download it now. What happens when a man meets a woman who's everything he wished his girlfriend was? Is his girlfriend's unconditional love and ride or die loyalty worth dealing with in her baggage? Find out the consequences of a man's need of self-completion and learn a lesson that everything comes with a price. The Lesson by Miss Cynthia Blue on Amazon.com Are you ready to discover your spiritual potential? This is Lane Cobb, spiritual wellness coach and owner of Straight Talk Coaching for Women, your source for enlightened and empowered living, offering products and services to help busy women see who they really are so they can be who they really want to be. Contact us at www.straighttalkcoaching.com or call 443-756-8391 to empower your spirit and achieve your full potential. All right. Thank you, ladies. They've been with me for a while now, and they're doing well out there. That's right. You you guys got to think about, you know, Facebook. Facebook is awesome. You know, you meet some wonderful people, great leads. You know, if you're in sales, man, that's an awesome place to pull some leads, you know, because people, you know, you can inbox them, you can tag them, and they reply right back to you if they're interested in what you got. But you can't rely on them all the time like that. You have to have a website. That's right. So you can pull them in so they can see what you're really doing, and then they can engage you, communicate with you, see who you are, check out your video. Because remember, those new f- news feeds move fast on Facebook, so they're going to miss it. So if you got a 1,000 friends, I guarantee you only six of them is probably even checking out what you got going on. And if you're not making videos, it'll be less than that because people love video. They will stop and click and see what's on your video. All right, yep. right, Tanika. Yep. Tanika Gonzalez, a.k.a. Tanika Joy, could tell you that's a fact because she started out with 120 views, and now she's up to about five, 600 views on her on her um, poetry uh, albums. Okay? All right, so it does work. All right, y'all, we're talking to, to Ralph Freeman. He's an author, and he's a producer of a stage play. All right, man, before we get in the book, man, tell us a little bit about the stage play. Well, the stage play is called A Dreadful Day which is uh, pretty much based off of my book, A Dreadful Day. Uh, I mean, it, it's some minor differences, you know. I mean, it's it's like two uh, two stories, but uh, the play is based off the book. And the book, uh, once again, is called A Dreadful Day. And it's just a story about a family that was torn apart by infidelity and broken trust, you know, mm-hmm. as – you know, as the couple begins their honeymoon stage, you know, they um, they found out that they were expecting a child. So mm-hmm. the husband begins to work these long extra hours just to make sure he has um, the family as well taken care of. You know, while he's working long hours, you know, his wife becomes bored and she begins to have an affair and 
that affair produced a second child, you know, mm. for, for obviously for another man. And um, she was thinking that this man is going to take her away from her so-called bored life. But to her surprise, he denies her and the child, you know. He turns his back on her and the child, and, you know, that – that just brings out all the rage and anger in her, and she begins to abuse her child. Wow. Wow. That is terrible, man. Now, speaking of abusing child, and you mentioned you are an advocate um, for, I guess, the, what, domestic violence, you said? Right, right. All right. How, how, how did you get involved with that? Well, well I mean, um, well, growing up, um, I've seen a lot of, violence, you know, especially when it comes to um, relationships, couples, and things like that, you know, and, and you know, I've never been too fond of it, you know, I mean, I don't think it's, I really don't think, you know, a man should be uh, putting his hand on a woman, and I don't think a woman should put her hands on a man, you know, you know what I mean, yeah. you know, spe- especially if you so-called love or care about each other, I mean, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be treating each other that way, you know, so. You, you know, so I just got with our local church and, you know, it started this little um, started this little program just to help us assist with um, with situations like that. And domestic violence is not, not only um, abuse between a man and a woman, but, you know, you, you, is uh, when it comes to children, you know, there's children abusing their parents and stuff. It's all different types of situations, you know. There's more than one type yeah. of... Uh, abuse when it comes to domestic violence. And I'm, right, I'm also wow. writing a book about domestic violence, me and a few other authors about mine. And and we're trying to cover every different situation when it comes to domestic violence just to open people's eyes up about that situation because a lot of people don't – a lot of people choose to ignore it. Yeah, and we got a lot of, a lot of national attention this f- past football season because we had right. two football players that were in the news involving a child and uh, his girlfriend. And, and right, right. And wife, yeah. Right, so but, but a lot it, of attention. Right, but, but you, you also know, you know, a, a, a lot of times when, what it was, when it was, um, I think, Jay-Z and whatever her name was, was, you know, fighting, on, fighting him in the elevator or wherever it happened, you know, a lot of people yeah, didn't see that. Yeah, sister in law. Yeah, sister in law. See, uh, what's her name? Um, so, uh, I her name. Yeah, Solange. Yeah, it, Solange. Yeah, a lot of people didn't see nothing wrong with the way she was um, whipping up on him. But when the when the roles are reversed, a lot of people got a big problem with Ray Rice and the way he was treating his wife. You know, it's not right mm-hmm. on either parts. You know. That's right, that's right. Plus, you know, we just, weren't behind. Nobody was in the hotel room, so we don't know what went down there, you know. So, right. obviously, you know, they, they had some issues. But it seems like they're doing pretty well right now working it out. Um, we actually don't we, we actually we don't live that far from him. And, um, you know, one of my best friends actually live a few doors down from him. So, so far, it sounds like they're they making things work, you know, doing the best they can. All right. All right, man. So now we're moving to your, the Dreadful. The Dreadful Day is a stage play. So, so why Dreadful Day? What what makes that that book so interesting and become a stage play? You know, come to life. Okay, well, that was actually the first novel I wrote. You know, and um, and w- when I was writing the book, you know, because well, let me just start off by saying, you know, I'm I'm an author, and you know, I want to just do more than just entertain. I want to write stories and touch topics that's going to make a difference and that's going to make people wake up and change, you know, maybe open up the door to conversation. You know, a lot of things, a lot of times situations like that is going on in our house and in our neighborhoods and people can't talk about it. So I felt that if I can write a story about it, it can open up the uh, lines of communication. So that's why I really wrote the story to kind of make a difference. And also, you know, had a tragedy happened in my life when I was uh when I was a young when I was a young teenager and, you know, I just wanted to really uh talk about it because, you know, as a family we never discuss what happened, you know. And you know, and a lot of times a lot of times in our houses and in our neighborhood, you know, we have situations that happen and a lot of us just choose to ignore it or just cover it up, you know, and it's not gonna go away. 
And it's just yeah, it's right. just bottled inside, you know. You just gotta let that out, and you just gotta deal with it. Yeah, because I was going to ask you, you know, what what you know re- compelled you to to want to get involved with this real deep subject. A lot of times when people do get involved, it's real close to their 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 household. You know, whether it was a sibling or it was an aunt that's staying because of a, you know of a violent uncle. So I was going to ask you, you know, what what road that you went down that you saw this. This, this dreadful day. Oh, okay. Um, well, well, well the, the idea really came from a situation I seen on the city bus. You know, I mean, a long time ago, I was riding the city bus and I seen this woman who had two children. And I mean, little kids. I, I guess the little boy was maybe like four, and the little girl was probably about two. Well, I give him about five and three, something like that. But uh, the little boy had asked her, can he have a soda? So she gave him the dollar to go get a soda. And he's running to the vending machine to get the soda. And she said, wait, wait, wait. You got your little sister. She said, you got to always think about your sister. It's not just you. It's your sister, you know. And it, and it kind of it made me smile because she was teaching her son to, you know, to really look after his sister, you know. And you know, it right. just made me think. It made me think. What if you had a situation where it was the complete opposite, you know, and the mother just just didn't just didn't uh, love both children equally, you know? So I just started thinking about it. And as I began writing, you know, I started thinking about my childhood, where I had a cousin of mine was was killed at the age of seventeen because you know he had a, he had a situation where. Um, his mother was uh, was dating this man that really didn't get along with him, and he really didn't want to be a part of our of our family in general. You know, I mean, he never he never came to any family functions or anything. But you know, uh, I mean, now this is only my opinion. You know, I mean, I don't really know everything that happened in the situation. You know, but I feel mm-hmm. like if you're a parent, you know. That child is a uh, is a package deal. If you're gonna be with me, you gotta accept my child. Mm-hmm. Point blank. Absolutely. You know, nothing Absolutely. else to talk about. You know, and, and I, I I felt that if she'd have pulled him on the side and said, "Look, this is my son," you know, if you're gonna be with me, you gotta accept my child. And then you pull your child to the side and say, "Look, this is the man I want to be with. You don't have to you don't have to like him, but you're gonna respect him." And then y'all mm-hmm. all spend time together as a family and try to bond together. Now, whenever you feel you trust him, you trust both of them enough to spend time with each other by themselves, then that's when they begin to bond with each other, and, you know, y'all just kind of build your family from there. But that situation didn't happen, and my cousin felt that she chose her husband-to-be over him, so he, he moves out, runs away, when, however you want to call it, but he begins to start selling drugs and running the street life. And my mother had pulled him to the side maybe like on a Friday, and she told him that if he don't stop, he's going to be dead before he's 21. This was that Friday. And my cousin died that Sunday morning. Wow. Hmm. You know, and, and, and he told her, he said, uh, he said, I just got one more thing to do, one more deal to make, and then I promise I'm going to stop. But, you know, it just didn't happen like that. You know, and, and as I was writing, the right? As I was writing the story, I mean that, I mean that just that just came to mind. You know, it just kind of got me kind of emotional and stuff. You know, so I felt while I was writing the story, I felt it was only right for me to write the real reason I wrote the story, which you can read that at the end of the book of a dreadful day. I also include, mm-hmm. you know, what happened with my cousin. You know, and j- mm-hmm. just as just as something to show people that, you know what I mean, it's real out here, you know what I mean? You never know. Just because someone else lived their life and they made it out or they are they living a lavish life that you might think you idolize, that that might not be your destiny, you know. You never know. He's right. You're absolutely correct. Now that's that's very emotional right there, man. You know, losing a relative to something like this, especially your mom had just confronted him. And it's right, always right. that one last time, you know, that that's always the thing that gets you. One last time, that's what you tell yourself. You know? Right, you know. And, I, and, that's, I was and that's exactly what it is. Yeah, I was 16 when, I, when that happened, you know what I mean? I mean, I've been to funerals before. I mean, we all been to funerals before, but really not nobody that close to me, you know. 
I mean, he was my mm. first cousin, you know, and just seen him maybe like two weeks ago. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. rough. Yeah, that is rough, man. I, yeah, I lost a best friend a couple of years ago, right before our, our home team won the championship. He loved that team, man, and um, he didn't make it to that season, you know. He uh, just saw him too, man, you know. You know, he was smiling like everything was all right. You know, that's how life go, man. Just got to keep it moving. Keep it moving. All right. All right. Let's talk about this book, man, Betraying My Father, man. So what's the deal with that book? I, I see on your, this is what you have written on your Amazon site, paperback. Wow. Uh, it's priced at fifteen ninety nine for the paperback. So is it available as a Kindle? Yeah, yes, it's available for Kindle at one ninety nine. Okay, because I didn't see the price on they. They talk. They got right, right. I mean, and uh, and uh, I don't know why they have it at fifteen because I mean it's actually uh, it's actually thirteen ninety nine. Yeah, and they got. I guess it's for the for the uh, Kindle Unlimited people. They have zero in the right, box. right. So I don't okay. really see your regular price. But the book said once happy home has been shattered by a nasty divorce involving allegations of affairs and abuse causing Angela to choose between her mother and father. Emotionally confused and manipulated, Angela sides with her mother, breaking her father's heart. All right, man. So what, what compelled you to write that book? Well, well, uh, well, I mean, uh, well, with me is, um, I really felt, I'm not going to even lie, I really felt kind of disrespected as a man. You know what I mean? A lot of times you you always hear about these deadbeat dads and, how these men don't step up and take care of their kids and stuff like that. And, I, you know, you, you don't hear too many singers or rappers, actors, actresses, and entertainers, period. You don't hear too many of those acknowledging their fathers and stuff like that. So no, I wanted to write stories. I wanted to write a few stories that are dedicated to, you know, to strong men. You know, and that's where A Dreadful Day comes because the father in that, that book is, you know, is a provider for his family, you know. You'll read about that. And it's the same thing with betraying my father, you know. Uh, once you read the story, it's a, uh, it's, a, it's a story about a family that's really close. I mean, in the book, the, um, Angela, she's close to both parents, but she's, she's daddy's baby. They do everything together. They talk about everything. But um, as she goes to college, she uh she suddenly finds herself in the middle uh and having to choose between a mother and father because they're getting a divorce. And you know, it really wow. shocks her because it really shocks her because she'd never seen them fuss or fight, you know. She thought they had the perfect family, perfect relationship. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh and you know, her, her mother comes to her one night, tells her that her father was having all these affairs and he abusing her and things like that. And Angela really doesn't leave her mother because she knows her father. And Angela is like, you know, I'm sorry, mother, you know, but you gonna have to, uh, you gonna have to prove that to me. You know, what I mean, I don't believe you. You know, I know my dad, mm -hmm. and he would, he wouldn't do that. You know, so her mother, mm -hmm. her mother sends her pictures of her face battered and abused, and also sends her um, pictures of these women that he's so called messing with. You know. But, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and which w once Angela sees those pictures, you know, she just automatically takes her mother's side. But as the story goes on, she learns that her mother had, um, it was a hidden agenda behind, behind the situation. And she learns that her father is the innocent one. And, you know, all this stuff that's being said about him is actually allegations and it's not true. And mm -hmm. now she's. You know, now she's feeling humiliated and embarrassed, and she has to swallow her pride and go apologize to her father. And her father is a tell-it-like-it-is type of person, you know, so she's mm -hmm. very worried about if he would forgive her or not, you know. And, mm -hmm. and and that's what the book is about. I just wanted to create a story where um, where you have a, a good family and you have a situation that happens, in the family, and it forces uh, it forces their child to choose, and you know, you see how she how she makes her decision with who she chooses, 
and you also wow. see how you also see how easily someone is uh manipulated and used because you know sometimes we can use the uh, the fact that you love or you trust someone so much to where you believe anything and everything they tell you. That's right. Wow, man. Now that 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 book sounds like it has some twists and turns to it, man. I mean, one moment, you know, the mom is showing the daughter this thing and that. So what she's like, uh, sending the pictures to her through through email or instant message or something like that. Well, 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 well actually, well, well, actually, since the daughter is in college, you know, she sent pictures to her um, to her dorm. You know, she sent you know she sent pictures to um, to her dorm. You know, th- through her mail. Right. Yeah, through the email, or was she using instant message? That, that's what I was asking. No, no, no. I mean, you know, through, through the mail, mail. You know, postal mail. Oh, oh, she, oh, she used snail mail. Oh, what the heck? I forgot about that. <laughs> you know, yeah, the I visual, think it's, the visual effect. You know, when you see it right then and there. You know, but you know, I mean, she yeah. was, she, was, she's real smart about it. She waited till one weekend where her daughter was at the house, and you know, she. uh she woke her up in the middle of the night to tell her about her father, and, you know, she was kind of, she's kind of uh, warming her up about this situation, telling her this and that has happened. And, you know, obviously the daughter didn't believe her. So, Mom you know. Sounds a, psychotic, man. Yeah, so a few, <laughs> days later, a few days later, that's when the mail comes in and she opens the envelope and she's seeing those pictures, you know. But over the weekend, she... Uh, over the weekend, her daughter had time for all of that conversation to, you know, to kind of marinate in her head about what's going on, you know. And once, mm. once, once she seen those pictures, that kind of sealed the deal for her. She already made up in her mind that her father was that type of person. Wow. The mom doing her thing in this book. <laughs> Betraying my father. Man, this sounds like a good uh, stage play right here, man. Matter of fact, it sounds like it could be an excellent webinar, man. You put this out on the right. net. Well, well I mean, I, I don't know. It's just something about me. I mean, I, 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 I literally think I can turn all my books into either a play or a movie with, within time, you know. Yeah. Now, now people starting to really now. We're gonna shift gears a little bit, Daryl. I mean, Daryl. A lot of people um are are looking at um you know, stage plays, and they're putting them in production, video production. Are are you going to consider that, you know, for marketing purposes? Absolutely. That's right. Now, are they going to be for sale? I know it's different type of platforms, how you can market your stage plays. Now, how easy would it be for somebody like you? I mean, you do it in high quality. How easy would it be for you to have this, um, you know, published on um, one of the, you know, pay pay-per-view channels like uh you know like my internet sites like hulu and um well maybe not netflix because i think you have to have a major distributor but i think there's a few independents out there you probably could use of course right, youtube right. is available now does youtube have it where customers can because i thought i got a link one time where they were actually allowing you to purchase movies right I right yeah, yeah. Before. they do okay. have an app where you can well, you can do that, you know. But, uh, you know, as far as the stage play and those type of productions, you know, a, a lot of times you're going to have to have, um, with a production, you're going to have to have like a fan base or something like that or, you know, or if, if they feel that they can make some money off of it, you know, they would be willing to uh, negotiate something. But, you know, you want to uh, be in a situation to where you know you're going to be able to make something off of it. Yeah, well, let's talk a little bit about um, Tyler Perry. I remember my wife and I was first dating. Well, I think we were married at this point. We were actually going to Morgan State University um, at there. They, they had a brand new theater, theater house, stage house, um, and they were producing. He was he was he was actually showing some, uh, his plays there with Medea. Medea. That's when I first saw right. Medea live, and and then before before I knew it, it was. It was on DVD where my kids love Medea on DVD. They just can't stop laughing at Medea well, on I, DVD. I, I, uh, yeah. You know, what do you, you think about that? I mean, he, he he pretty much gave us the blueprint on how to market yourself as a as a stage play. Right, right. Or producer. 
You know, and you're right about that. You know, and I I, I continue to look at, uh, you know, the journey he took and, you know, the way he do things and, you know, uh, I, you know, I'm gearing myself to kind of be in the same position, you know. Yeah. Now, you're not talking yourself out of it. Are you talking yourself more into it? What I mean, like, I know it's going to take money, you know, for right. a decent production, but you have a lot of college kids out here that have um, production capabilities, you know, at their school. You check some of these community colleges out, they have those film programs. Um, exactly. They got their own exactly. cable, you know. Yeah, you know, exactly, you know, and um, like for uh, someone that's trying to do stage play and production, you know what I mean, that that could be like a, a good way to go where you go to those technical colleges and those schools where you have those those um, youngsters that's trying to get into that field, you know, and you work something mm-hmm. out with with the school and with the class to where, you know, they can help you with the project and you'll, it'll cut some of your costs a little bit and you can – you can take some of the money you saved and go towards um, more exposure and advertising and stuff, you know. As long as you got you a good product and it's mm-hmm. very professional and stuff, you know, there's a market for it. You know, you just got to make sure you develop it and produce it and, you know, mm-hmm. do everything. That's right. you know? Yeah, I mean, the technology, the technology is here right now. I mean, with the Internet gives, gives you the capabilities to find an audience, it, 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 I mean, the bandwidth is incredible the way things stream. I would have never thought that we would have the streaming capabilities that we have. I remember I used to try to watch Netflix. It used to get on my nerves before I used to be buffing the whole time, you know. Right, I'm, right. I'm talking about you connected to the Internet. You know, you connected to a landline. Now wireless, man, is incredible, you know. Right, right. You know, yeah. and, and, and that, that that's the thing, you know. I mean, we need to jump up on this uh this technology and stuff like that, you know what I mean? A, a lot a lot of these youngsters, they always on Facebook and doing all this other stuff, you know, but, I mean, technology is the future, you know? Right. Now, yeah, a lot of the kids kind of abandoned <laughs> Facebook. They left it to the, to the parents. This is our territory now, which I think right. is a good thing. I mean, you're talking about it's over, and I tell people all the time, there's over 500 million users plus, you know, if you ever get a chance to, Check out people like Marie Folio, Amy Porterfield. You got a number of these experts out here. I mean, it's a couple guys got some excellent productions out there talking about how YouTube and and uh, video productions can be used to, to 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 engage your customers. You know, for you, I think it's the ultimate man. I, I would be super excited if I knew that Facebook, a tool like that, was out there along with YouTube and now, the fact is you don't have to carry those big super cameras around no more. People are shooting excellent productions right from their tech. Because I think the tablets actually shoot better than the iPhones because I actually try right, all right. of them, and my tablets shoot good. way better. Yeah, and especially with the with the uh, the uh, software is right there for you. It's just a matter of just touch screen and everything. And the fact that they have a lot of tools that you can use to mount your, your cameras and, I mean, your uh, tablet. And just um, you don't need super light, just inexpensive lighting. So I've done all that stuff. I mean, I have two studios myself, and we haven't really used them to to the full capabilities yet. We're still, you know, playing around with some ideas and just watching how people are taking us in. You know, sometimes you don't, you know, like, like they say, man, you know, you don't want to become a millionaire too fast, too quick, you know. Right. You want to take your time, you know. So that's what we're doing with our production but look man I, w- I wish you the best with all of that man we're going to take a quick break when we come back we're going to we're going to have a, uh, one final discussion and then we're going to uh, have you close out the show all right man sound good oh no problem all right all right everybody we're talking to daryl freeman find out exactly how much marketing he's trying to do now he's, he's his name is he's trying to get his name out there and, and what better way of using the internet 
All right. So stay tuned for this message from Book Buzz with Lisa Sandler. Are you an author looking for promotional services or a reader looking for a great read at low prices? In this competitive world of books, Writing Royalty Promotions is dedicated to bringing authors and readers together to build a greater respect for literature through our various promotional services and online bookstore. So head over to writingroyaltypromotions.com and check us out. All right. Check it out, y'all. Lisa Sandler. All right. Talking to my man. He's a stage play. He's a producer, director, author. We're talking to Daryl Freeman Jr. And he has his own website out. But actually, it's coming soon, right? He said freemansworld.org is coming soon. Is that right? Right, right. It's actually freemansworld.net, and it, and it is uh, it is up and running right now. Oh, okay, dot net now. Okay, because I was looking at your bio. All right, we correct that. All right, man. So you you have some big you have some big visions, man. And I like that. Um, I think a right. man is nothing without his dreams, man. You, you got to have dreams. Now, what was what's some of the other projects you you see yourself jumping into? Yeah, I know you're in production with the stage play, but what you going to be doing in between? What you got I going mean, on? In, in in between, I'm gonna be writing other books. I'm writing other stage plays. Um, I'm I'm actually um, I'm trying to uh, start my own foundation um, called Our Youth Our Problem, and uh, and and you know hopefully in the future I'm sure uh, I want to have my own restaurant too. You know, so a couple yeah, of little so. couple of little things I'm working on. You know, got to keep those ideas rolling. And I'm, you know, I'm also uh, developing a few snacks that I have that I have been working on. <laughs> oh, so, get I mean, out of here! So, yeah. so you, are you a chef? Are you? Did you go to culinary uh, school? No, no, I didn't go to culinary school. But you know, since I like to eat, I also like to cook. You know, try different things. You know. Ah, oh, okay. I was about to say. So, so how easy would would it be for you to open up a restaurant if you didn't, if you didn't have a you know if you didn't graduate from one of those culinary schools? Um, well, um, I, I don't know if you would call it easy, but I mean, you know, you, you have the, um, you have the, uh, the resources and, you know, you have the money and a couple of partners, you can, you can pretty much open up a restaurant. I mean, I, I have cooked in different restaurants. I've been cooking in restaurants for the last eight years. I've been a grill mm. cook, a chef cook, a fry cook, and I've also been a prep cook, you know. And you know, right. a, a few friends of mine, along with my brothers, are uh, are managers at restaurants too. You know, so not only do we have experience for cooking, but we have management skills too. Okay, you so know? that's who you was working for. You 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 were working for your brothers? No, 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 no. Uh, we we all work together. But uh, once I get the restaurant, then obviously they're going to be working for me. <laughs> right. But, uh, okay. So, but so it, you have uh, so you have experience. So basically, so you have experience when. So what's your idea? I mean, what type of restaurant is going to just be straight grilling? You know, like what sub subs, pizza, chicken. You know, what's your, what's your theme? Well, well, I mean, mine is going to be be more of a a cultural type of place. I mean, I want to do a little bit of a little bit of everything. You know, I you know I want to try a little soul food. Want to uh, also try uh, some of my own uh, recipes and tacos and different things. I just want to try a little bit of everything, you know, like a little bit of Italian, a little bit of Thai food, a little bit of soul food, just like a, li- a little bit of everything. Oh, so you're going to be all over the place. So so somebody say, oh, man, we got to get down to so-and-so because he got some good so-and-so. What would that be? What's, what's, what's going to drive them in there? To get, I mean, uh, going? what would drive them there would, would be uh, some kind of platter that I would have, you know, and and mm-hmm. and this would be like a combination of different, you know, different types of uh, cuisines according to what you like, you know, yeah. kind of like if you know, uh, l- let's say you want to order something online and and I'll have like a little survey about what. What what are some foods you like? And I'll just I'll just pretty pretty much prepare something along those lines, you know, like a good yeah. little class to try a little bit of everything. Right, all right. 
I'm just joining you, man, because my son, he's he's actually opening up a smoothie truck where he's going to be marketing, um, you know, some healthy healthy uh, fruit drinks and stuff like this. All uh-huh. the drinks. Make sure he's ready. <laughs> All right, man, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to get your final thoughts on tonight's show. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. Daryl Freeman, Jr., and uh, he's the author of several publications, Betraying My Father's One. He's pushing now. Dreadful Day is going to become a stage play. It, it's in production. It should be showing and playing in, in uh, Playhouse starting in November. And hopefully we'll be able to get them downloads so we can see it from where we are because all of us are not going to be able to see it. Because <laughs> uh, right. you're doing a, a hundred-city tour. We are planning on traveling, you know, so, I mean... Now, we can't come to every city, but we're trying to come as many places as possible. Oh, okay. Now, let me ask you this, there. So you got it like that, man? You just can shut down your job and just go on the road? Or you, are you straight? You just a straight entrepreneur, 100%? Or, you know, you got a job where uh, they see me well, well, I mean, they I mean, see me? I, I, do, I do have a job, but, you know, but like, like I've, like I've been preparing them for uh, for this time that's coming right now, you know, because like mm-hmm. I say, I'm an author. I mean, I'm always doing book signings and going different places, so right. you know. So, so I'm, you can I, shut it on got, down. Right, right. You know, when when it when, it, when it comes the to these things, you gotta uh, you gotta push forward. You know, you gotta push forward. That's right, man. So you tell the boss, you know, you rolling out early Friday, you gone. <laughs> you gotta catch a plane. Yeah, that's the handle that. <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right all right man so before we take this break man um where can fans find you man um any book signings coming up anything like that where people can you know prepare to look for you um well, well uh you could you could find my books on amazon i create space barnes and noble um books a million uh i'm i'm starting to go do some book signings i'm gonna do a uh a book signing at uh, uh what's the name of that place is uh New Nubian Mall in um in Morro, Georgia. I'm gonna do a okay. book signing over there. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a book signing at uh, Between the Lines in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Louisiana. And, yeah, and you know, and that's the only locations I have so far. But I mean, I'm. Uh, I'm waiting on a few other calls to uh, book some other places, you know, because, right. I mean, You've been busy. Yeah. I, I also oh. write poetry, you know, so, I mean, I try to do a little bit of everything, you know, and inspirational quotes and stuff. So, I mean, I, I'm just I'm just really trying to get that message across, and my play will have yeah. some of my poetry in it also. That's right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's Daryl Freeman, and, and you can find Daryl on PositivePower21.org also along with this show. Well, you're listening to it, but you probably found it on Facebook. But you can come out to PositivePower21.org. You see uh, Daryl's books on our, on our page. Also, you, you're, he, he's getting a channel up soon, so you'll be able to view some of his um, his work if he have any other work out there uh, on the Internet. And we will find out if he has some stuff out there for you to see. So hold tight, everybody. A quick commercial with my, my, my good friend, Darlene Rucker-Williams. All right. What do you give to a person who has everything? Hi, I'm Darlene Rucker Williams, and I am the owner of Stylish and Seller Gifts by Dar. I get this question all of the time. At Stylish and Seller Gifts by Dar, we specialize in customizing gifts for people and pets too. Our gifts are original and one of a kind. Not only do we deliver, we ship as well. We work according to your budget and your things. We have gifts for all things, including baby showers, sports teams, get well, bridles, birthdays, pets, just because, and that's just the name of you. So let's smile and sell a gift by Dar. Take the worry out of your gift giving today and also for the holidays. Our website is www.stylishandseller.com and our phone number is 443-682-5664. All right, it's Darlene Rucker-Williams. Check her out. 
All right, everybody. We back now with Daryl Freeman Jr. Uh, this guy has so much talent, man. He can cook, grow. About to open up a restaurant. You got too much talent, man. You know, where's your? How you know where to focus? You know, I know your head going crazy at night, man. He's like, oh, I'm gonna try that. You know, you're a visionary, innovative, man. That's tough. That's tough to live that way, man. Be that. Be that type of a person. How hard is? Yeah. Oh, it, it's real hard. I mean, uh, like everybody else, I did a lot of struggling in my life. And, you know, once I decided I can do better, I started focusing on trying to do better. You know, that's when I started writing the poetry and I started doing my books. You know? And I always was able to cook and I always liked to cook, so I always wanted to try to come up with different uh, menus and mm-hmm. stuff. You know, as you a had child. a recipe book? Well, that's what I'm working on, the recipe book. Oh, okay. Awesome. All right. You know, as a child, I always wanted to uh, design my own clothes, you know. And, um, and you know, hopefully after I build a, up a big name for myself and start building up my brand, I can uh, I can get into uh, designing my own clothes and stuff too, so. Yeah. Man, you sound like you like you all built to my kids, man. My, my daughter actually um, – can do that kind of stuff. She sews. She can make stuff. Um, well, she uses patterns now because she's not that great of an artist. But she has an idea what she wants. But uh, well, right. she, like I tell you guys, she's only fifteen. So you can sew too. You know, how to sew from scratch. Uh, I mean, uh, I I know how to sew a little bit. I don't know how to sew a whole outfit, but I mean, I know how to do a little bit of sewing. But uh, uh, like my mother and uh. Some close friends of mine, they really know how to sew, and you know we're we're working on mm-hmm. concepts uh, to get the uh, the clothing and stuff together. But I mean, I I know I know how the, I know how it's supposed to look. I can do the layout, and you know mm-hmm. they're just ha- and I have the vision. They just have to uh, put it together for me. You know they uh they have a three D machine out that actually can print out fabric. You just load the design, and it actually prints out the prototype for you. Did you know that? Oh, no, uh, a- actually, I didn't know that. I mean, uh, like some some of these designs that I actually have are maybe from like four or five years ago because I mean I haven't been really thinking and trying to come up with new designs because I've been so busy with the books and stuff and mm-hmm. and you know it to 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 me the books is what's going to help me uh, get out there. The books, you know, that really opened up the door for the stage play. So, you know, I figure yeah. once I'm established, then I can really focus on that once everything are kind of like smooth sailing a little bit. Yeah, you're going to be making your own costumes for your, for your stage plays. You're going to be designing your set. That's probably yeah, what you're doing. It's tough be it. You know, are you watching that show on HBO stop. called, um, oh, I'm sorry, what you say? Yeah, I, I say that's how you cut costs down. <laughs> That's right, and I, I was gonna say, are, are you watching the HBO show called How to Make It in America about these two guys that that started this design, this, their own American label? Right, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll check that out. Yeah, I like this show, man. I'm actually on the second season now. It's very inspirational, man. Especially when you, when you, you know, you try and work without no money, you know, the grind. Right, right. You try and ask for an opportunity, you know, when you get it, then all kinds of things start. The universe start acting crazy on you. <laughs> All right, man. Well, let's get you let's let's get your final thoughts for tonight's show, man. We actually went well. We don't have a, another show behind us, but we went, we ran a little long today. But I appreciate you sharing all your information, man. You're a very inspirational guy, man. I I wish you the best. I know something's gonna happen for you. I guess you know. Oh, yes. I know you. I know you got a lot going on, but you know you know where you want to go. All right, you ready? Go, give us your final thoughts. Yeah, yeah. Well. Uh... I mean, it, it was a great show. My final thoughts is just to anyone out there that's just trying to do anything. If you want anything in life, you just got to work for it. You know what I mean? You just can't. Um, you just got to remember, you, you're going to have setbacks, but you just got to keep pushing forward and keep moving forward. You know, so like I say, be your biggest critic and convince yourself you can. Just don't let somebody uh, talk you out of doing something that you know you have the power and the ability to do that's right that's right man and we wish you the best with all that man and especially you know when uh, when you get closer to your stage so we can't wait to find out you know if that thing gonna be under the hot lights being shot on video man HD so the world can see and we, right. we hope and that, that, that 
And Positive Power 21 be right there with you, man. You know, broadcasting so the world can see you. And we appreciate you uh, being a sponsor of the program. Um, you know, like I tell everybody, you have to support your independent media so we can be around the next time you release a project. You know, promote so we can bring even more bigger audiences to to one another so they can keep shopping on you guys, you know. Absolutely. Money. All right. All right, man, we out of here, and I appreciate you, brother. And we will talk again, man. Next time you release a project, you definitely got to get in contact with us so we get you back on. That's, that's what it's all about, supporting one another. All right, man, I tell, them, I tell them all the time, man, if they want to hear the good stuff, man, I mean, the real good stuff, just like tonight, man. This guy's a chef. He's a stage play writer. He's an author, soon be designer. He does it all. Producing, composing, all of that good stuff, man. All right, this is Jerry Voice Live. I'm worldwide. Thank you for tuning in to Jerry Voice Live on PositivePower21.org and Spreaker.com forward slash PositivePower21. This is a Voice Enterprises production. And don't forget about replay on Facebook.com forward slash Jerry Voice Live. All right, everybody, stay awesome.